Hi, I'm Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, and I believe this is episode 153. <laughs> uh, big hello and welcome to new viewers, and a big hello and thank you to re uh, returning viewers. <laughs> oh, it is a cold, snowy Sunday. I'm trying to keep warm. I'm so glad I don't have to leave the house. So I'm having a nice hot cup of tea and getting to record on time with some good lighting. Yay! <laughs> Last week was so crazy hectic, as was the week before. <sighs> but we'll talk about knit alongs real quick. We are having our Ruby, the lovable, huggable monster, and Xander, the trusty sloth knit alongs. So there's Ruby. And I'm so excited. There's already Ruby finished and a picture posted in the FO thread. And then Xander. And I went, and mine's attached at the hands and feet so he can hang. He likes to hang. <laughs> and then, um, so, okay, January is winding down, which is fine, because you still have all of February to knit and enter your, um, critters. So they had to be started no sooner than January 19th, and they need to be finished by February 28th. And then in March, we're doing a Mario the Artistic Rabbit knit along. His floppy ears. And his cute little pom-pom butt tail. Um, and then, so, I was talking with my friend Kristen, who is now a moderator. She's Zippy BG um, on Ravelry. So I made her a moderator in the group because my work schedule has been so hectic and I've been working so much lately. And she's just going to help keep an eye on anything. Um, I mean, I meet up with her every week and we knit together at the knit shop and uh, text all the time so she's pretty much in the know of what's going on and I feel she has enough knowledge about patterns that she can help answer questions um, and everything which has been just a huge huge blessing <laughs> so um, she also because she's so super awesome has donated a bunch of yarn that we're gonna spread out through the year for prizes and so the prizes for the January, February Ruby Xander Knit Along um, is a skein of O Loops. Um, it's the glitter base, so it is 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% other, which I assume is the sparkle. And the color is called Makes Me Feel Good. So it is um, pink and blue, and I believe she said this was um, from a club. It was a club shipment. So um, thank you again, Kristen. Um, so this is going to be prize to winner number one. And winner number two is going to get their pick of any one of my patterns. So if you want to pick one of the upcoming toy knit along patterns, you'll be all set. Or their shawls, cowls, um, to pick from as well. I'm not going to limit you to just toys. But, so her and I were kind of bouncing ideas off each other. And it was really... Um, she had mentioned before the holidays and everything, she kind of wanted, asked permission to start threads to do knit alongs throughout the year for different toys because she's on a big toy kick and wants to kind of work her way through my patterns, which I'm like, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> um, so we were kind of bouncing ideas off each other and we thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to have like a category where you get to pick from multiple kind of animals and then I kind of threw out there, what about an under the sea theme since I love sea critters so it's kind of jumping ahead a little but it's giving you as the viewers and knit alongers um, perspective so you don't go oh I just knit that pattern wish I would have known a knit along was coming up for it because I've been there and I'm like oh. so like I said January and February is Ruby and Xander March is Mario the artistic rabbit and then April May and June. It's going to be a three month knit along. It's going to be under the sea. So it's going to be the octopus, the squid, the turtle, the fish. Is that the, are those the only under? But you, there's going to be a variety you can pick from. And as always, you can knit as many as you want. You can knit them all. You can knit ten fish for all I care. They just all have to be posted individually. Um, as always, you can only earn one prize, no matter how many times your number has been drawn. Just the amount of entries increases your odds of winning. So, easy peasy. You can use any yarn, anything. Do the face however you want. You just have to use my pattern for the initial body. 
uh, and that's all I can think of. So exciting. We're only up through June for kind of knit along ideas. More stuff's going to come up and I'll tell you about that closer. I'm not going to jump any farther ahead than um, April, May, June because I mean it really is around the corner. I mean this is January 25th. I'm like where did January go? So yeah, January, February, March, April, spring is around the corner once we can get through all these snowstorms. We're supposed to get at least six inches today of snow, and I I am glad to be home. Glad it was a Sunday. Unfortunately, I do have to get up tomorrow morning and deal with whatever is left over that they haven't cleaned off the roads. So, um, I have no finished objects. I keep plugging away at things, and it's just not happening. But I'm not monogamous with my knitting, so... It happens. Uh, first up, I have made progress on my Storyteller hoodie. I had to think what it was called for a minute. It is by Karina Spencer. And it's really hard because you go back and you put an edging on it so it's rolling. But it's really making progress. So I am now... Um, so there was waist shaping, so you increase, or you, know, you decrease, knit, and now I'm increasing again. So it's really pretty. That black looks so stark, like very black on the screen where I'm seeing it. And it really doesn't look that bold in person. It's actually like a blackish, almost like a greenish black as the yellow's moving into it. And then it's navy blue, and it's really not showing the navy blue. Maybe if I get a little closer. Hey, you can kind of see the navy blue. It's so much prettier. The depth of color is so much prettier in person, I promise. But it's coming slowly but surely. Um, I'm using Noro Kirian for the main body color. And then the trim and the cap sleeves will be in Cascade 220 in Deep Spruce. Which is really a deep teal color. I don't, I don't see this and think deep spruce myself. Um, but it is color number nine seven nine two zero seven nine two zero. So I don't know. Really picks up the teal, the stripes of teal in the color. Hold it closer. See, so you can see the teal here and the teal. So I think it'll be nice. It looks really nice with it. This is so out of my normal color range. I love teal, I love orange, because it has little a little bit of orange. This stripe lost the orange because I joined a new skein. I'm not quite to the orange again. But um, the whole raspberry kind of fuchsia color, totally not my normal colors. But it's, it's good to reach outside your box every once in a while with color. I just keep plugging away at it. I just joined my fourth skein of the Noro. Supposedly I only need six, but I think I'm going to be cutting close. I might have to buy a seventh one. Um, I bought two skeins of the Cascade 220. Hopefully that'll be enough as well. Uh, let's hope. <laughs> In my Kiki Boo bag. I love this bag. It's the large bag, I believe. Yeah, it's not a small. I'm pretty sure it's a large. I love this for sweaters. And then my year and temperature scarf. We kind of stayed the last week in the uh, upper 20s and lower 30s. So... It's not getting overly colorful yet. Lots of blues and purples. A little bit of green. So, it's coming along. I'm using um, Cascade Heritage Silk. We're doing it as a knit along at the knit shop. So we went and wound and wound and wound tons of skeins um, to make up the kits. And, yeah. Come along, I'm doing seed stitch instead of garter stitch. I just was afraid my garter stitch was going to look sloppy. 
I think the seed stitch is a bit more forgiving. So, and then we're using 11 different colors. I couldn't tell you the names of more than maybe two of them, and nor do I know the names. When I was winding all the skeins up to divide them and everything, because you get a half skein of 11 colors, um, I was writing the color on the tags, and someone did something with the tags. I don't know if they got thrown out. I don't know what happened to them. But they went MIA, and... Oh, well. Nothing I can do. So I am caught up on that. Um, I just have to do today's. I haven't checked. I keep track. I try to check every night before I go to bed on my phone, the weather app, to see what the high of the day was. So I'm using the same source, checking like about the same time every day. And so I won't do today's until at least tonight. I sometimes do it right before I go to bed because it's only two rows. You knit back and then forth, across. And now I am, um, I just started these last week. I just had the cuffs done. And these are my Afterthought Heel Socks. Um, I'm doing a slightly modified version of Laura Linneman's pattern. Um, the only thing that I'm, I really modify is my stitch count. I cast on 60 stitches on size 2s. Because I found that is just what works for me with my gauge and my foot size. I am using Opal. I love opal sock yarn. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it's the softest, softest sock yarn on the planet. Um, it is a little bit rustic, but in a good way. So let's see, opal. It's part of their um, Rainforest Collection. I think it's from Rainforest Collection Six, if I remember correctly. I think that's right. I think that's what I searched for to find it when I saw it on Ravelry. So, opal sock yarn. There's the little picture. It's a little lizard that it's based on. A little orange and aqua and white with lizard. Um, it is color number 4007. And I love it. I mean, these are so my kind of colors. So it's down here. So it's oranges, yellows, aquas. Um of a deepish greenish black color I don't know what seems to be with yarns that I get lately with like a greenish black in it the Noro has it too um and it's just fun it has, oh and it has like some maroon in it and it just patterns so beautifully I really really love it there we go like that so I'm to the same spot on the other sock as well So I kind of do my own version of a two at a time. I knit one, like, cuff on one, cuff on the other, leg on one, leg on the other. If you've watched for a long time, I'm sorry for explaining it over and over again. But I do get that where people ask sometimes why I do it that way. I never get second sock syndrome. And then as I go along, I can make sure my stripes match. Because they do. <laughs> I love matching striped socks. Um... My hat's off to those people who it doesn't bother because it would bother the snot out of me. Um, the whole fraternal sock thing, I just I just can't do. And the whole, oh, but it's just proof they're hand-knit socks. Yeah, don't buy that one. If that makes you sleep better at night about your socks, go for it. <laughs> no, I just, I just like them to match. I don't need someone to believe they're hand-knit, I guess. I just like to put my feet together and all those stripes match up. It makes my heart happy. Um, so I have gotten to the point where I have knit to the cuff. Um, this one I've knit a few extra rows on because I had time sitting there. I usually try to work on these while I eat my breakfast in the morning because some days that's the only day I get to knit. It's like 10 minutes at the breakfast table. So... Um, I have put in on both of them the lifeline for my afterthought heel because I cannot bring myself to cut my yarn yet. And I don't know that I ever will. I'm okay with that. So you can kind of see right here there's a lime green stripe right in the middle of like this dark repeat. See? Right there. That's where I'll put my heel in and I will try my darndest. I should have enough yarn left over where I can even match up 
where that should meet and put the heel in in accordance to the pattern of the sock because I am that OCD about it. <laughs> and those are the only three things I worked on this week. And it's so funny because I feel like I've been knitting on that Noro sweater forever. And I actually got like a whole skein into it this week. And I still feel like I have not made enough progress at all about it. I know at one point I'm just going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm done, right? Um, I do have some yarny goodness this week. I bought a couple things on D-Stash on Ravelry. Um... So, Madeline Tosh announced their discontinued colorways. So, their colorways that they're not going to be dying up anymore. And I don't know why Madeline Tosh does this to me. So, it will be two years ago, or around two years ago, they discontinued window pane, which is my all, well, my all-time second favorite Madeline Tosh colorway, because Baltic's my first. I love Baltic. I think it's just the most gorgeous color ever. Um, but they discontinued window pane. And so there's a sweater that I want to knit that I had bought in a couple colors for. And I was going to use Bloomsbury, which they discontinued. That's what they announced that I was heartbroken over. But anyway, so I was going to use Blues Bloomsbury because I couldn't, I couldn't get it. It's discontinued. It's sold out in every single store online that carries... Um, Madeline Tosh. I don't have a lot of LYSs around me to go and just look for it. I actually can only think of one LYS that carries Madeline Tosh right now that's in reasonable driving distance. I didn't want to have to call around, make a special trip, blah blah blah. So anyways, I found a skein of window pane and I got it on D-Stash and the girl told me. Like, I was completely informed and aware about this. She goes, I have what I'm willing to sell. Because I put a call in the Madeline Tosh Lovers group. She goes, but it has these weird little splotches on one little part of the thing. Something got spilled or sprayed on it. Um, she goes, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it'll come out. And she sold it to me at a ridiculously cheap deal. Like, for the amount she offered it for me for, I was like, it's absolutely worth giving it a try. So I don't know if it'll pick up. But it's like right here. Some little dots. Yeah, yeah I can see it on my screen. Little dots. Um, so I'm going to give it a gentle bath in some soak, and I'm going to let it soak and see what happens. And I, you know, I really think that those little spots, especially since it's only on one side of the yarn, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal if I use it, because I'm using it in kind of some color work. Not true, true color work, but in a very colorful pattern, um, and I think it'll be fine. But then when I heard, because... I, I was going to use Bloomsbury instead of this color, um, but then someone offered me one when I put a call out there to see if anyone had one. I was kind of like, hmm, after hunting for Bloomsbury and not being able to find it, it's kind of heartbroken because it is a beautiful color. And why Madeline Tosh keeps discontinuing aqua colors, I will never know. I do not like button jar blue. It's more green than blue. I don't like it. Um, it's not going to work for the project I have in mind. Um, so, <laughs> out of curiosity, I went on Ravelry and searched through the Madeline Tosh stashes, stashes for Bloomsbury, and someone had one up for grabs. So, I PM'd her, and they're both vintage, the vintage base. I don't know that I said that. So, anyways, I PM'd her and was like, is it still available? She's like, absolutely. I paid her, got it in the mail, and it's beautiful. And it's not maybe quite that bright. The the Bloomsbury or the window pane is not quite that is not this bright in real life either. It's toned down, but you can see this one's considerably brighter than this one. But I love them both. This is one of my favorite ones, though. I'm so sad that they do not make this anymore. And this, I don't know what I'll make with it, um, but I have one, and I mean, I can make something. I could make a cowl. I can make a hat. I can make mittens. I love the vintage. Absolutely love, love, love it. And then I bought something that I haven't bought in a really long time. I bought fiber. I know, right? Fiber.
So it is abstract fire. I guess I can take the price tag off it. Not that I don't want you to know what I spend on things, but it's not necessary. It wasn't ridiculously expensive. I'm not trying to hide, like, guilt shame. I have no guilt about it. Um, but I bought some fiber from my LYS. It is abstract fiber. Um, so hand-painted yarn and fiber from Portland, Oregon. Um, the fiber is BFL. And the colorway is Manzanita. Four ounces. And it is beautiful. So it's like a plum color. Not quite as pink as it's coming up on my screen. And this is definitely a little brighter. Let's see. Like that. So it's kind of a plum and a green and a gray. I don't know what it was about it, but I was looking in the... We have like a little fiber room. So I was looking in the fiber room because there's been a lady coming in on Saturdays for spinning lessons. And I'm like... Oh, I need to get my wheel out. I have not spun in so long. Like, I think it's been over a year. That long time. So, I really wanted to spin this this morning. I wanted to tear it apart and get it split how I wanted to. All ready to spin. But I wanted to show it to you all pretty. I can take the label off now. So, when I'm done recording this, while I'm waiting for it to upload onto the computer and then the internet and all that other jazz that it takes, um, I'm going to... I'm going to spin. I'm going to spin today. I don't get a, very much time to do much of anything anymore. But, oh, I don't even need to really split this whole lot. Because it's really, really thin. Little pieces. Oh, it's so soft. I wish, like, I could hold this up to the camera and you could pet it. But it's so beautiful. I love that it still has some crimp in there. Pretty, 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 pretty. I love it. And it's so funny, at the shop, all we mainly have is BFL, I noticed. I love Polworth. Polworth is my fiber of choice. I definitely don't find enough of it at places. I usually have to order it from somewhere. Um, but I'd spin Polworth over anything else all day long. BFL would be my second favorite. So that's it for the yarny and fiber goodness. I have nothing else to show you, knitting-wise. So, if you leave me now, I will see you next week because we're going to move into a slice of life. Um, gosh, I mean, I just feel like I say this all the time now. I'm like, work. Work has consumed my life. I feel like I live there. I'm like, maybe I should just have all my packages forwarded there. Because I only get to the P.O. Box normally once a week, and it's on a Saturday morning. So, if you send me something, um, or I buy something d and I don't respond to you right away, it's because I haven't gotten it yet because... Oh, it's chilly in here. Um, because I have not gotten to the P.O. Box yet. But I get there eventually. Um, so yeah, work, work, work. That's all, all I've done. And then, it's so... Okay, so I work in a candy shop. I make things at the candy shop. It's hard not to eat candy. Like, it's there. And it's really hard when you've had a bad day not to buy a piece of something, a beautiful piece of handmade chocolate and take it home and eat it in the car before the kids even know you bought it. <laughs> and it's so good. Um, so I forgot to mention last week because I'm kind of trying to talk about it again because I feel like talking about it to you, the viewers, makes me accountable to myself and to you um, because so many of you have shared stories with me and have asked how I've been doing with it. Um, last week I gained... Or not, wait, let me think. No, last week I lost, and then this week I gained. So it was loss, loss, gain, and I was so frustrated. I mean, I didn't gain back all I had lost, like half of it, but I feel like I'm going to gain again this week because um, one of my favorite co-workers, the one who, um, most of the girls I work with are younger girls. Like, I have like 10, 12 years on them. Um, so she was an older than me lady. I don't want to call her an old lady. She wasn't. Um, but a lady older than me, and she trained me on a lot of things. She's one I really clicked with because, um, you know, the other girls I work with, they don't have families and kids, and sometimes, like, they're going to college and doing this, and it's hard for me to relate. And sometimes I just want to be like, ah, oh, don't do that. Like, like I, you want to pass on your wisdom of, you know, make better choices than that, really? Come on. 
Um, but you can't because then you get all preachy and then no one wants to work with you. I know because I've worked with ladies who try to give you advice and let's face it, it gets lost sometimes on the younger girls because when you're young you think you know everything. I know I did. And, um, you know, so it, it's just going to be sad because I kind of feel like I've lost like the person I relate to the most there. Um, and, I mean, she taught me a lot, and it was so sad to see her go, but it was her time. She she didn't want to be there anymore. Um, she had other things she wanted to do. And, uh, I mean, she left on a good note, and I took her a little bouquet of flowers. It was nothing fancy, just a little, I'm going to miss you. Because um, it was kind of short notice, but they gave her the option not to have to put two full weeks in. Since we've been kind of slow, because it's January. Um, it's kind of the after Christmas lull that retail has, um, and, uh, so it was hard because we kind of snacked all day and had treats, and then the weekend came, and I tried to be good. I really tried, and, uh, I kind of failed, but I keep saying Monday, because today even, I was like, <laughs> It's always tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. But it's so hard because everybody's home today. It's cold. You just want comfort food. and um, But I'm trying a new recipe because I am not a cook. I am not a cook. I envy all these beautiful pictures I see on Instagram of people, things people made for dinner. And I need good, healthy, easy recipes. And I really, if anybody has a crock pot cookbook, they can recommend where it's easy, healthy, accessible ingredients. Because I hate when I get something that looks delicious and it's like these ingredients I've never heard of are ridiculously expensive. Like, I got a family of five to eat. Feed. They all need to eat something that is reasonable. Um, I mean, I'm all for buying good quality ingredients and, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, but some of the stuff's just stupid expensive. Especially, like, seasonings and spices. It always floors me how much spices are. Um, but if anyone can recommend a good crockpot cookbook or a website, I mean, there's so many websites. I know people are always like, well, Google this or search for that. And so much comes up and it's so overwhelming. So I would love any input from any of you if you're willing to give that to me. Um, because I don't have a lot of time, but I'm, we're all sick of the same stuff. Like, we're all sick of eating chili. <sighs> We're not sick of eating tacos yet, but I don't want to get there because I love tacos. I love Mexican food. As long as it's not spicy, like hot. I don't like heat in my food. Um, and then I made a really good chicken pot pie that was quite um, figure friendly. And everyone got sick of that. No one wants to eat chicken pot pie. Although they're going to eat it this week. <laughs> the kids don't know it yet. But I've been craving some chicken pot pie. Just some good comfort food. I'm going to make it. So, that's kind of where I am with that. Really not, nothing else going on too much. I'm trying to get things more organized. I feel like I try to organize things a lot, but I've noticed with working, um, and my husband's been working a lot more with his new job, um, and getting acclimated with that, we kind of come in and just dump things. And I didn't do that before because I was home, right? Someone would come in and, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, bless me. Um, you know, he would come in and drop stuff down, and I'd be right there to pick it up and put it away. And with the way our schedules are right now, I'm not here when, you know, all that happens or I'm busy and doing my own stuff. And I kind of feel like things are getting out of control. <laughs> um, so it's trying to find a new way to keep organized and balanced. So when the weekends come, I don't feel like... Holy crap, the house is a complete mess, and I spend all weekend wasting my time cleaning. Not that cleaning is a waste of time, but you know what I mean. I just feel like I do nothing else. So, that's my big thing, trying to organize everything, especially my yarn, because I have too much. I don't need to buy more. But it happens. So, that's it. I, don't, I can't think of anything else to talk about. There was, like, something else I wanted to, like, mention, but I don't take notes anymore because 
I end up not even looking at them. I fly by the seat of my pants normally anyways. It's funner that way. I don't want you to feel like I'm ever scripted and boring. <laughs> so, um, that's it for me this week. So, I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon. I am Retro Lemon on Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Fitbit, and Weight Watchers. And until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.